Years ago in seminary, and it's feeling like more and more years ago, a pastoral, in a pastoral care course I was taking, I heard a professor say something like, uh, something that I've actually never forgot. Ministry, he said, ministry is in the interruptions. Ministry is in the interruptions. He went on to suggest that when we soon to be pastors would find ourselves in our offices at the church, hiding with the door shut, working on the Sunday sermon, and someone stops by and knocks on that closed door, if when you open that door, that someone says to you, I don't mean to interrupt. But, <laughs> then, then it's time to put the sermon aside and sit down with ears and heart open because ministry is about to happen. When someone braves a closed door to tell you something, then more than likely they need to tell you something that is important to them, and they want you to hear. Something that is troubling them, that needs sharing. Some wound that needs a kind of emotional lancing. Or some joy that just can't wait until Sunday morning to be shared. It may distract you from your sermon, our professor reminded us. But more likely, it will remind you of why you preach in the first place. Hmm. Because there is good news to be shared. And what better place to share it than in the intimacy and healing of sharing the stories at the heart of our lives. Sometimes, the interruption actually becomes the needed focus for the moment. Sometimes an interruption becomes a ministry for everyone. In today's gospel story, Jesus too found that interruptions can become ministry. The crowds had gotten word that Jesus was a healer and they were constantly pressing in on him from every side, needing, wanting his healing touch. When we find Jesus in the story, he was making a beeline to Jairus' house, whose daughter was believed dead, when suddenly he was, suddenly he was interrupted. <laughs>
It had robbed her of her life. Not only did this persistent hemorrhaging leave her body weak, it also left her spirit depleted as well. Her malady was isolating, particularly in this male-dominated culture of Jesus' day that already isolated and controlled women for fear of the differences in their natural cycles. Bleeding was considered an impurity in the ancient Hebrew culture, and a flow of blood that would not stop was practically a relational death sentence. Interestingly, Jesus, too, felt his vitality leaving him when she dared to reach out and touch the hem of his robe. Her body was healed by the flow of power going out from his. Jesus did not scold her for this unexpected interruption, this unexpected transfer Jesus blessed her. Jesus blessed her for her faith. Jesus blessed her for having the courage to knock on that closed door of his busy schedule and interrupt him. Jesus called this isolated woman a daughter, a word of belonging and inclusion to one who had been cast out as untouchable. Jesus called this isolated woman a daughter, even as he had been focused on the supposed death of another daughter, Jairus' daughter. And Jesus goes on to heal that daughter too. But his life seems to have been changed due to this courageous woman's interruption. Her interruption seems to have brought Jesus a needed awareness, an awareness of his own human frailty. He may have been filled with the Spirit of God, but apparently he was not Superman. The encounter with this hemorrhaging woman raised an awareness within Jesus of the hemorrhaging in his own life. He had been so busy reaching out to the crowds around him, healing and healing and healing, that perhaps he had failed to realize his own sense of depletion as the healing energy of life went forth from him. Interestingly, soon after this story in Mark's Gospel, we find another in which Jesus empowers his disciples and sends them out two by two to share in the ministry that he had begun. I think this is not accidental in the story. Giving Jesus partners in the work of God's kingdom, this interruption became a focus of ministry for Jesus to himself so that he could be of help to others. Perhaps Jesus saw the woman's interruption that day as more than just a mere distraction from his schedule. Perhaps Jesus saw the interruption as part of the flow itself. Perhaps Jesus saw the woman's interruption as a piece of spiritual guidance from the Holy Spirit, a movement of God to call him to new awareness, the awareness that he needed to take care of himself if he was going to care for others. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's true that interruptions can just be distractions from what's needed. But oftentimes, oftentimes what we perceive to be interruptions to our perfectly designed plans and schedules are actually part of the flow. The so-called, or these so-called interruptions can be an urging from God if we pay attention to them. An invitation from the Spirit to a new awareness, 
to a deeper understanding of ourselves and the flow of ministry that we are called to participate in. These interruptions can pull us off of autopilot and if we let them, bring us clarity as to what is most important in the moment. So friends, pay attention. Pay attention to interruptions. In fact, Dave's interruption <laughs> is, is actually making a little bit of sense to me now. This, this table that Dave brought our focus to, this table is itself an interruption. It's the sacrament of interruption. Meals are a needed interruption in our busy lives that call us to stop and breathe and take some time to be together in community. Meals are an invitation to become aware of our own depleted vitality and to find nourishment for our souls as well as for our bodies. <clears throat> this table is a divine interruption for us on this day, calling us to stop and breathe and take time to be in community with God and with those around us so that we might have renewed energy for our own lives and the ministries that flow from them. So friends, come to the table. Come to the table and leave your distractions behind. And find here a sacred space to be fed by God and renewed in the spirit of communion. Our lives and our ministries await us. Thank God for interruption.